Super Wonderweight Boxing. This would be a good fight, Frank, because uh, Laporte is, uh, is a real trier. He's got less fights. He's age 28. He's only had four bouts. The other guy has had 18 fights. The other guy's been a national champion. Uh, Paul Chappie out of the Queensland, out of the blue corner. And uh, Frank Laporte from Reservoir out of the red corner in the white trunks. Frank Laporte in the white trunks on the red corner and um, Paul Tappy from Queensland. Out, one. Black trunks in the blue corner. Here we go. The first of eight three-minute rounds. This will be a good boxing match. Oh, nice. Nice jab from Frank. Just, I know the fight's only just a short time old, not even 15, 20 seconds, but I don't like the way Frank's got his head up in the air. Frank, two Frankies. You're Frankie on my right here in the court. I don't like the way his head's up in the air. Paul Tappy is very tight, very good defensively, isn't he? Paul Tappy, the black trunks. He looks the craftier of the two. Yeah. Well, he's more experienced. He's got 18 total fights. He's one year younger. He's a one year older, 28. difference in experience here, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, he's had 18 fights. He's had 10 wins, four KOs, seven losses. The other boy has only had four fights. 28 years of age from Reservoir. The other boy is 29 years of age from Queensland. Paul Tappy. Right. He lost on a chance for the uh, national championship against Shannon McMahon last time he was in Melbourne. Nice, nice, nice. That's a winning punch there, that right hand. It's a beautiful punch. He, he timed it right. Frank Laporto, he hurt. All happy with that right hand, a beautiful right hand. And what, a good luck, Chad. What, what we're seeing with Laporto, which we didn't see in the last fight with uh, Clinton Johnson, is Laporto's keeping his distance. He's punching from a distance. He's not getting up too close. And he's using the jab. Ooh, right hand again. He's going to tame that right hand. This fight might end in a quick one. It was a good right hand. Just don't like his head up in the air. But still in all, he's got to get hit on the head in the air. But he's doing pretty well so far. The other boy, Tappy, he had a nice He's tight defense. He got, he got hit with the right hand pretty solid. Enough set him a bit, I think. You see his eyes starting to puff up on the right side, Chap Tappy. Laporto's got a little venom in his punch, you know? He's got a little, little zing in it. Ooh, there he has. Me, yeah. Yes, he's, he's got a little bit of sting in it. Yeah. Tappy's eye is coming up a little bit on that left side. Oops. There we go. What a good round. Come on. Good punching. Power punching. Oh, yeah. Well, the Porta, he um, took that round in any case, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Trying to see which eye is popping up there, Frankie. And he's standing in his corner, too, the same as William Ladlow did in the last fight. Both Queensland boys standing in the corner. Same trainer. That's my baby. Nice little round, nice little round, opening round for Frank Laporto. Yeah, it was. He, he controlled the round, and uh, which was quite amazing because the other one, guy's got so much ex yeah. experience on him. Yeah. Yes, that's true. It's incredible. Here we go, second round. Eight rounds by three minutes each. We're into the second round now. Here we go, Frank Laporto in the white trunks in the red corner, and Paul Tappy in the black trunks in the blue corner. I've got... Laporto winning that first round. Uh, again, he gets a right hand out there. And another right hand. 
Punching with bad intentions, as they say. He's got a magnificent uh, body, that uh, Frank, yeah. for, for a boxer, hasn't he? Well-conditioned. Looks that way. He looks, uh, looks yeah. fit. Looks, uh, he looks at his weight, too, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He looks superb. And his weight Superbly was 68.9. 68.9 was his weight. Nice looking lad. Turn around, turn around. Always watch the other guy. Don't take your eyes off him. Fighters have a habit of doing that. It's not good. They should always keep their eyes in their opponent all the time. The referee's in there to help you, but you've got to protect yourself at all times. And taking your eyes off your opponent is not, not a good recipe for doing, doing that. It can be a give me for your opponent. Absolutely. And don't worry, plenty of taking advantage of that in the past. Of course they have. You've got to defend yourself. I think a fighter actually died once when the bell rang and he dropped his hands and he got hit. I think it was by Max Spear. He was a power puncher, one of the biggest right hand yeah. biggest right hand punches in the heavyweight division at that time. Yeah, Frankie's pretty controlled here. The other the other boy is uh, the other boy's tight defensively, but too many good shots have gotten through. Good jab from both boys. See, Frank is moving. He's moving left and right. He's giving him angles, not just going back and forward. He's moving from left to right. I think Didn't Paul Tapley's waiting for the right hand. He's yeah, trying he's waiting to set for that it. right hand up. Let's see, Paul's uh, had um, 10 wins, four KOs in those 10 wins. So he's not what you'd call an explosive puncher, would you? No. The other guy, the other guy, Frank, has only had one KO in his... Uh, well, I think perhaps I'll have to... I'll have to stick with Laporto on that one again. He uh, landed some very good sharp punches. Once He's again, well, we've got Tapley fighting a negative fight. Yeah. He's fighting a negative yeah. fight. He, he just doesn't seem interested. Maybe that, that first big right hand took the interest out of there a little bit. No yeah, that tell. possibly. Can have a tendency to do that. Again, another tactical fight taking place here. Frank Laporte is um, slightly ahead on my card in any case. Um, Tapley from Queensland, the next uh, Taking champ. As we approach round three. Queensland, former Queensland champ, the national champ. He fought for the national champ. He, he's Kabeek got the experience. You never know. He might be setting him up for something. Sure. You don't know. Sure, the fight's got uh, six might, more rounds to go. Might, might be giving him a false sense of security. The you third, never know. Third round of an eight-round fight. the fighter are taking a backward step. No, no, they're doing well. A little bit of a... They're both trying to make the fight. Yeah. Paul tappy has got a couple of nice little jabs there working for him. The Porter comes back with left hook that just misses. That one right hand landed, left hook landed. Porto's coming good with the punches that count, Frankie. Yeah, but I, well, the same token, uh, I wouldn't sell tap leech too Not, short. Won't I do think. that at all, except he threw that last right, that last right hand was a slap, and that doesn't work. I think he's 
sneaking back into the fight a little bit this round. Could be. And um, maybe he's pacing himself. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Laporto's going a bit too hard. Time will tell. Line them up with that one. Come on, come on. Keep your eye on your guy. Oh, he's good right now. Support landing the cleaner punches, I think, Frank. Yes, but I think the other boy's getting a sniff now. Yeah, yeah that was a big right, right hand. Yeah. I think, I think goes, the fight's yeah. starting to take a bit of a change. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Tappy sneaking his own in front a little bit, I think. I think he's got Frank a little bit figured out a little bit better. Yeah. See, Tat Tatley's not giving him an inch. No. He, he did him a little bit early in the fight. He's not never giving him an inch there. He kept up on him. He changed his seconds. Chris Harris kicked four goals for the Magpies, and Neon Leon Davis continuing his great form. He's kicked three. Davis three, Tarrant four. Collingwood 20 points in front at half time in the AFL. Yes, I gave Tappy that round, so it, it's even the fight up a little bit. I got 28 29 at this stage, and Tappy just out of it a bit. He's starting to come good, he's starting to figure out. Frank Laporta, I think. Frank come home in those first early rounds. Although Frank is still landing some clean punches, um, Paul Tappy started to land some of his own in that round. Yeah. I think his experience is coming to the fore. I, I think it's going to be hard from Laporta from here on in. Here we go into the fourth round of this fight. Obviously, uh, Paul Tappy's had the experience at the longer route. He's gone the long rounds. He's gone the ten rounds and eight rounds, whereas I think Laporte is the first eight rounder. And this is the fourth round of this eight rounder, with Tappy firing that jab, come out firing the jab. <coughs> Frank's corner calling for Frank to jab, jab, jab. He's not doing it right now. A little bit of a slap coming from Paul Toppy. Not much of a straight line on that. I, th I think um, Paul Tap Tapley is conserving his energy better. The other guy is just going full of the gate. Could be. We'll see who's going to finish the stronger. See that? That's bad news when a guy walks away like yeah, that. It's, yeah, it's definitely not on. from Tappy. Another one. Getting his jab home. Oh, yeah. He traded right hand. Tappy's bringing some new punches in his uppercuts. Um, he's changing his his uh, his arsenal. Saw a beautiful uppercut that he, he landed in. He got just changing well, you, up you the punches. You don't win a national there. title for nothing, Gus. Yeah. <coughs> Tappy comes back with uh, punches that allowed Frank to get over the top of him, though. Two punches. Frank came in with the right hand that landed. 
I think cool. Frank's getting just the fra fraction too tired, you know, because he's not conserving his energy where Tapley is. I think you did right on that. It does appear to me the same thing, that, that Frank might be slowing down just a little bit. You, you've got to pace yourself. Look at that. He's just a little bit like he's leaning now. He, that could be bad news for him. Starting to miss the mark, yeah, Gus. Yeah. yeah. Round four. Okay, that uh, that brings the fight into Tapley's territory, as far as I'm concerned. He's edged. He's dead to head by one point. That was a good round for him. He showed uh, some. Um, Different punches they seem to come good with more punching and landing more, whereas uh, Laporto did not do the same thing he's been doing. I, I think the, the, the key word here is experience, and the most experienced fighter of the two is starting to take control of the fight. You're very right, I think it's a very good call. Very good call, Frank. And we still got the five, six, seven, eight. We're at the halfway point. In this fight right now. Five. We have four more rounds to go. Five, six, seven, and eight. And uh, with the condition that Frank is in at the moment, I think perhaps he's going to do those rounds harder than the other guy. Here we go. Round five. I think. I think the fight will start turning from this point onwards in Tapley's favour. The further it goes, the more because he's pacing himself better. I think because of uh, Frank's inexperience, he's a bit tense. Now, Frank Laporta didn't land any of those punches, really. No. The name of the game is landing with the knuckle part of the glove and the scoring part of the body. That was a good punch. Good left good hook, left Frank. Hook. That was blocked. Good right hand. Two good punches from Frank Laporta. Once again, uh, likes nothing in the uh, endeavor of courage, does he? You heard him with that right hand. It wasn't just a slip. He heard him with it. Now we'll see how Paul Tapley handles this. He got hurt with the right Ooh. hand. He got hit with another right hand left hook. We always did say in the beginning that Laporta had a bit of venom in his punches, didn't we? Yeah, but he, he loads him up. He's a tension fighter. Yeah. You know, whether this round takes a lot of how much it takes out of him could decide the, the fight, the way the fight goes. <coughs> Paul really hasn't uh, has made up for that hurtful punch he took. Sometimes it only takes one punch to win the round. And he hurt him with that one punch. And he's missing him quite a bit. Although I think that Frank is uh, is is uh, probably a little bit short of a gallop. Yeah, he's an all or nothing fighter. He just goes full of the gate, doesn't he? He gives all. And that might be his undoing. Let's. He can't go to the body and hang on like that. All right. David Gucci representing your car, table 66, double six, route 66.
Well, I got to fight that even again because of that. He hurt him with that punch, and that was enough to give him the round. The Frank, was Frank came back in that round, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, he did. Just when we were going to bury him, he, yeah. he, he came back. Came back. I've got the fight even up at this stage. It's three it's rounds pretty even, yeah. I think it's there to be one. One of these guys who wants it the most. And um, I noticed Tappy Tappy is sitting down now. Sat down the last round too. Started off st standing up. If you're going to stand up, stand up all the way. If you're going to sit down, sit down all the way. Not a good psychological edge to get the guy in the other corner when you see him standing Sanders up. And up. And exactly right. Six, seven, and eight for this eight round fight. Here we go. Uh, Did he say it was a final round? I don't think he said this eight rounder. The sixth round. He said it was the sixth round. It was the sixth round. I've been calling an eight round all along. This is the final round, and it's up there to be one. I've got to fight that even at this stage. Well, one of these guys got to want it. They got to really want it, right? They got to really want it. They got to follow all the stops. The fights, both their corners should tell them it's close. Let it all hang out. Let your hands go. Yeah, I think Paul could win the fight for this stage, and, and Frank could win it. It's just who wants it the most? You can let it all hang out. Good punches. Good from body Paul. punch. Very good punches from Paul. It's his edge on this. As far as I'm concerned, at this stage, come on, let him go, let him go. Ooh, Paul Tappy is coming back very strong. Jackie Ropas, he's having a go, isn't he? Yeah, the, and so just when you speak, so too did Frank. It's a root turn out to be a really good fight. Yeah. At least they, 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 they want it. Both want it for this round. I'm sorry I called it an eight-round fight. Now my scorecard is listed for eight rounds, but obviously they cut it short. This is the final round of a six-round fight. He's coming back, Laporta. It's been a big effort, to, considering the big gap in uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah Laporta is coming back. I, I think he might, he might have done enough to win this fight. Yes. Uh, I think you might be right. Frankie Ropas. I don't know. I like I like Tapley because he came good all the way. He was doing very well. The last round he just he just held off a bit. Let Forte come home. But I think Frank I'm gonna go for the Queenslander. I, I think the first couple of rounds, I think Frank fought really well and I think he he got the points here, and um, I think Tapley got a couple. I think it's very close, I, I don't doubt that, but I think that Frank's just edged him out. All right, let's see what the judges say about this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a, we have a split decision, but it's a, a big reverse. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Andrew Campbell gave it 59-55 to the red corner. Judge Malcolm Bulner saw the fight the other way. He gave it 59-55.
to the blue corner. The final and deciding card in this case comes from Judge Wayne Ashdown. He gives it 59, 55, red corner. The winner by split points. Wow. See, there was a big, big, big difference there. Big Real difference, big difference. Yeah, yeah. 59, 55, and the reverse, 59, 55. That's like, uh, ooh, nine points. And then there's the other one, 59-55, too. Now, it depends on how you see a fight, yeah, mine, really. Mine was 58-57. I was a lot closer than any of those people, but at least I had it for the, uh, for the Queenslander. And in actual fact, they had it for Frank Laporto. I think Frank... Um, uh, Bad luck. Yeah, mate, that's the way it goes. Um, every time I come to Melbourne, I have close fights, and... I know it's in their hometown, it's got to go their way, but I could have, it could have been fair to call it a draw, I reckon, I mean, but that's the way it goes. Um, all the best to Frankie, he fought a good fight, um, but we'll definitely do it again. Come up to Queensland and, um, yeah, I haven't fought since October last year, so a bit of a layoff, um, sort of, I need a bit more, you know. Your favourite down here, Paul Tapley, very gracious, Paul Tonato Tapley from Rabina on the Gold Coast. How about three cheers for Frank Laporto, his best win in professional boxing. Hey, Bip. Hey, Bip. Hey, Bip. Frank, congratulations, a new stable, Maurice Schott and all the boys, and a, a big win against a Queensland champion and a nationally ranked welterweight fighter. Uh, I want to thank, first of all, Paul Tapley for coming down from Queensland and uh, giving me a shot at him. But um, I've, I've just had a like, eight months layout and um, it's been hard for me the last couple of months, but with the people in my corner, Morris, Paul and, and uh, Charter, they've helped me a lot in the gym. They've, they've done a lot for me and they've brought me to this stage at the moment. And hopefully I can just keep, keep getting better and, and uh, uh, always keep, keep fit because that's my downfall in this sport. I have trouble with my fitness sometimes, and that's what I've got to build on. But I want to thank everybody that came in to support me, and I want to thank um, uh, people uh, that came from, my, from where I work to come to support me. They've never come to a boxing fight. Wherever you are, thank you for coming here tonight and seeing me fight. I'll be back better and, and willing next time. Thank you very much. Frank Laporto, a big winner here tonight. Right, we come to an international, truly international, eight rounds of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome to the scales from Thailand, the former WBF featherweight champion in the world, also the Thailand featherweight title holder, 60 professional fights. Would you welcome Kong Thuat Sokiti, 61.8. Okay. Nobody knows. And Nigerian from Lagos, Nigeria. Tomorrow night having his second fight in Australia, Iziaka Fatea <laughs> on Kiki. <laughs> 17 fights, 16 wins. Bob the Weight is a triple champ. 62.8. Beautifully matched, 62.8. This man's a real champion fighter. Fatai on Kiki, welcome back to Melbourne. Tomorrow night at Fort Knox. Uh, Kid Dynamite, uh, all African Nigerian welterweight champion, dropped down to light welterweight, and tomorrow fight former WBF uh, lightweight champion Kong Thwat Saw Kitty. Uh, tell me about yourself, your condition, and how you're going to take the fight tomorrow. Um, I'm Fatai Onigeke, the African champion and former Komori champ, and I came to Australia to come and prove myself as a champion. By tomorrow, I'll prove myself as a champion in Australia, and I'll make sure that I'll knock my opponent down. You're protecting a knockout. Any round? Yeah, yeah I, I'll perform just, I want every, all, all people to watch my fight well. 
maybe in three rounds I'll knock him down. You think in three rounds? Yeah, yeah, it's three rounds. Okay, he's also very confident, says he's going to give you a boxing lesson. Oh, okay. Well, uh, ring with George. Well, we'll get to the ring, ring with George. Okay, uh, good luck tomorrow night. Yeah, thanks. Kong Fwat saw Kitty, welcome back to Melbourne. Um, you've always been a good performer here. Um, had nine rounds with Mike Katsuti, he's in a great fight. Push Lee Purcell all the way. Uh, to, tomorrow night you fight uh, for Tai on a Kiki. Game plan for the fight. ยินดีต้อนรับกลับมาสู่ออสเตรเลียอีกครั้งแล้วก็คิดว่าจะยังไงจะต่อยกับโอนิเกเก้วันพรุ่งนี้มั่นใจขนาดไหนก็ก็
and from the country of Africa. Not the country, but the nation of Africa, comprising many nations. Eight rounds at super lightweight. Introducing first on my left, occupying the red corner with Tom Aldemira, joining Mr. Tassanui in the corner. From Massa Lacan, Thailand, the former World Boxing Foundation featherweight champion of the world. Also his national featherweight champion at 34 years of age, 60 fights, 33 wins, 26 losses, one draw, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Don't be fooled, he's fought some of the best fighters in his time in Australia. Lee Purcell, national champion Mick Shaw, national champion Michael Katsidis, and Gary Sinclair, ladies and gentlemen, at 61.80 kilograms, gold with red and blue. Would you welcome from Thailand, Comfort Sokiti. Sokiti. And across the ring with Brian Butler, Greg Greg, and Johnny Murray Thompson from Blackburn's famous Fighters Factory. Stepping up to his second fight here at Fort Knox. 12 months ago, almost to the day, he KO'd his opponent, Petch Ubol, in 25 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the All-African Welterweight Champion. He is the reigning Nigerian Champion. He is the former Commonwealth Welterweight Champion. At 23 years of age, 17 fights, 16 wins, only one loss. 13 big wins coming by way of knockout. 62.80 kilograms his weight in the Brunswick trunks of green with a touch of white. Now based in Blackburn, Victoria, Kid Dynamite, Matea Arikiki. Uh, here he goes, one of our feature attractions. It's truly international. Congratulations to Murray Thompson, Brian Butler, all the team at Fighters Factory. Keaty, I've seen him fight a couple of times. He's a stayer. He's a guy that's a dour sort of a guy that hangs in there. They had a lot of fights, some 60 fights. So a um, lot of experience. The other guy is an ex-Commonwealth champion, current Nigerian champion, very good. Kid Dynamite, they call this kid. Can They're you hear not me, very Frankie? tall for Walla Whites, are they?